just a little bit of a sound check. Everybody can see me. Um, can you hear me good? Can you give a thumb up? Can you hear me? Okay, can I see that? Let me see. Okay, again, anybody give a thumb up? You can hear me. Great. Okay, picture is good. You can see me as well. Good. All right. Oh, God, that's so exciting. <laughs> I want to give you a little bit of an insight what is happening. Um, so this technical thing is is really exciting, and uh, I learn every every time a little bit more. And uh, as in this Corona times, we are a little bit banned from the workshop site. We just like trying to figure it out new. And so am I. So every time I do a webinar, I do a new setup and I try something new, and I hope. Uh, I can engage in the way how I used to do that in workshops. So I just want to show you what I'm doing. So I have a big beamer now here in my workshop room in Stockholm. On the other side, I have a big screen. And now I can see you all as if you're here. Can you see that? So I try to engage with you as much as I can. Turn that around. And see how it all goes. Okay, and um, uh, who of you is familiar with webinars? Who of you have been on a webinar before? We'll raise a hand. A few of you. And for, for whom, as far as I can see, is that the first time never been on a webinar? Okay, so you're kind of familiar. Who of you have, have done a webinar? Who of you were giving a webinar? One, two, three, four, maybe a handful, or maybe a few more. So it is super exciting. Um, I'm nervous and I'm feeling excited and I feel good. I feel good to go. Uh, it's about six o'clock. Uh, we'll wait a little bit more. I imagine a few more people to come. We are uh, about 49 people at the moment. And uh, um, first of all, please unmute yourself so that. Um, I will think I will mute you. Not unmute yourself. Sorry, that was wrong said. Mute yourself. I'll mute. <laughs> okay. Opposite thing. So because if you're having the sound on and we're having this big sound salad, and we're going later through questions and answers and we see what works. If you could just like put your questions in the chat box where you just write a big Q. Um, or we see we might do kind of if you just want to ask a question then please raise your hand but that pretty much depends on how many people we are and i have not an overview who else is raising their hand so we see how that goes we're trying to figure that out on the go so welcome everybody to the webinar pleasure in your hands and uh, conscious sexuality live from stockholm the six o'clock we go about uh, 90 minutes and i would like to ask you um, where from the world are you? Please write the country and city where you're from in the chat box so that you introduce yourself to others so that other people see uh, where you're from. And um, okay, never let go super fast. I can't even read that that fast. So Finland, UK, Toronto, so Canada, Sweden, Germany. Uh, another Germany, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Holland, uh, Netherlands, Bulgaria, uh, USA, Philadelphia, Baltimore, New York. Um, so pretty international. So I imagine Asia and Australia is not here because it's late. Yeah, I, I got some requests people wanted to come. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they said they were skipping already. Um, so please feel utterly free to um, put your camera uh, picture on or turn it off exactly as you feel comfortable. Um, if you're not comfortable being seen, there's in the left-hand corner, is it? And, no, so I think I have a mirror in this corner, <laughs> in this corner, now in this corner. In this corner, there's a camera button. And if you would like to... Um, Blind your camera, you put that button on, and then your camera is blinded. If you um, 
uh, we need to go to the bathroom or pick your nose or drink something in between or so whatever you need. Please, please feel absolutely entitled to practice absolute self-care. Um, so we go about 90 minutes. Uh, I show you a little bit here. I will draw something because I love drawing. And later on, I will as well go on um, uh, keynote slides so that this is just like pretty much that you have the entire thing on the screen and then you see a little video of me in the uh, right corner. That's part of it. Uh, we do some questions and answers in, answers in between. And then of course, a webinar, uh, I wouldn't say has the agenda or um, has a goal, but I have the intention I offer in about uh, two and a half weeks, I offer online training for 10 weeks it costs a foundation of somatic consent. So where the entire dynamic of everything that I have so far provided in the webinars will be um, dived into in details. So it's a pretty complex in, uh, uh, dynamic. And uh, so I wish I could deliver that all in one webinar, but I can't, even if I try hard. So it's just like, it comes in chunks in digestible chunks, and I don't want to overload you. And I'm, I'm so passionate about that stuff. I could easily talk for hours about that, and I would overload you. So um, as I said at the end, I'll just do a little bit more uh, about that offering that I'm having. If you have any questions about that, I would like to know anything more. So then um, uh, please feel free to uh, write down questions that you have in between that you can ask. Uh, in between or at the end, or you can as well send me an email afterwards if something is unclear and we see where that goes. Um, anything else that I want to say? It's just I have I have I have notes here, I have notes there. So if I'm not engaging with you and I'm looking aside, I'm trying to figure out what I have written down to this like keep you um, uh, up to date with everything that I want to do. Ah, so I invite you for a few moments just to bear with me, close your eyes, and just feel into your body. Ah. Take a deep breath. In. And then breathe out all the way to the end of the exhales. So that you press all the air out of your lungs. So inhaling just occurs naturally by an input. And then fill up your lungs automatically. <sighs> and then give it a sign anyway you want. And I would like to. Um, Another deep breath, inhale. Ah. And just feel free in between to do as many of this inhale and exhale as you like. So that you bring your attention to your breath. So a few words about myself. My name is Matt, Matthias Schwenbeck. Um, I'm German-born, I'm a world citizen. I left Berlin about 10 years ago, and I've lived there for 12 years. I'm originally from Hanover, kind of a town in the middle of Germany. I've been traveling around the world maybe five times or six times, I even don't know. And I have been teaching sexual sexuality or conscious sexuality, uh, couple counseling, um, total fan and passionate about body work and sexual body work. So I'm a body worker. I do couple counseling and um, as well going on festivals, doing smaller um, uh, weekend workshops, do bigger workshops and week long retreats. The long retreat was a practitioner. Uh, hands on practitioner training that was about 30 days in Bali about two years ago. 
that was on the edge what I can provide. 30 days of teaching on a workshop. That was just like too much. Um, so my passion as a body worker um, is at the moment I'm in a transition as a body worker to educate body worker in this modality that I teach specifically as well as sexual empowerment and um, sexual embodiment. So that everything that I provide today is not written in a book. It's, it's 20 years of embodied experience. And I ask you not to believe a word that I'm saying. Uh, my invitation is to find it in your body and see what resonates with you. Some stuff might resonate and some stuff is completely bullshit on your screen and you think, oh my God, that's just like absolutely not working for me. So please don't take it on. Um, I'm not claiming any truths. You have the truth and it has to resonate and vibrate in your body. So you have to feel it in yourself. And this is my, my main sharing about empowerment and um, what I would like to provide in the bigger picture. So we are about 60 people, it's 10 past six. I have here my notes, 10 minutes for introduction and what we're going to do uh, within time, let's go. So um, I would like to start with sexuality as we all know it. And as we all know it, it is, um, procreation, procreation of sex. So we all know procreation of sex. Um, at least from the place of, we are all part of procreation. So there were two people that we called our parents, they had sex one day and they have really enjoyed or not, I don't know. And something happens, a miracle, you got conceived, uh, mom got pregnant, gave birth and you got born and you have lived your life. So procreation is good. And I put a sacred label on procreation. I have three kids myself. Um, some of you might have children, some of you might want children, some of you might don't, but you know, you get the point what procreation is. I guess so. Yeah, everybody knows what procreation is. Okay, great. So procreation in itself as a neurological um, cellular imperative in our nervous system comes from a survival mechanism. So it's there for us as a species to continue to evolve and to risk. That's why it feels so good. Otherwise we would not do it. And in our limbic system and our emotional body procreation is um, a, a deep imprint in us. It's a, it's a neurological sympathetic expression. It's on the core deeply related to our feelings and it's, it's, it's good in our roots and in our core, specifically when you want to procreate. Uh, but I imagine you don't want to procreate every time when you are sexual or when you're having sex. I don't. Otherwise, I would have a few thousand children and um, I imagine you too. And we would be in another place on this earth than we are at the moment where of you know, so many. So uh, we are so many because it feels so good and we don't need to procreate to survive anymore. So it's not necessary. But most people live their life and I, I was one of them the first 30 years in my life that sexual energy, I have lived that as if I was procreating every time. So when sexual energy was coming in my body and I felt it, I went down the road from sexual arousal to orgasm. So, and I imagine to a degree, you know what I mean that, you know, it feels good, orgasm is great. Climax is awesome and it feels so good because that's how we procreate and how, and, and how we how we follow that goal. Yeah, okay, it looks like 
Looks like I'm back. Okay, looks like he's back. Let's see. Hi. Okay, here we go. Please. I apologize for that. Um, but we can't see you, I think. Can you see him? We can't see you, babe. No. No, we can't see or hear him. No, I see him, but I, I could not hear him. Are you see him? Okay. Yeah, I see his camera. Okay. Can you hear there me? There he is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Great. Let's all mute again. Hey. Yeah. Go into participants. Mute all. All right. That was wasted five minutes. I have sweat on my head. <laughs> Try to stay calm. <sighs> okay, here I am. This is how life looks. All of a sudden, when internet breaks down, and we're having how many people do we have? 60 people, and um, everything crashes. So, I was at that point about procreation that when we have lived our life in the, in, the, in the way of procreation, what happens in our reward center when we know sexuality starts with an arousal and it ends with an orgasm, we created an enzyme in our, in our body that calls Delta Force B and this enzyme is literally like carving a pathway in our reward center. And this pathway in our reward center signalizes us that when sexual energy starts with a certain arousal or with a certain, um, I just unmute everybody here. Uh, I'm not unmute. So when that starts in our nervous system, we just know the beginning and we already know the end. It's just from A to B. And when that is in our nervous system, that sexual energy becomes like a, like, a, like, a, like a normal way of this is how it is and this, this is how we, how we train ourselves. So, so we create an, a goal or an agenda. So when sexual energy comes into the realm, that when we're getting turned on, we need or we have to have this orgasm. We need to have this climax. We need to have this gratification. We need to have this satisfaction or we need to have it as a release. And some people, they, they, they can't even orgasm because they're already sensual activated and they have this pressure that they have to have an orgasm. And then they have to have a better orgasm and a bigger orgasm and a greater orgasm and more orgasm. And you know, everything in Tantra is just like having, having deeper, harder, stronger orgasms. And um, what this is doing, it's just like carves a deeper, Kind of pathway in our nervous system. So um, I would like to uh, draw you one picture about this, what I meant when it comes to this goal and when it comes to this feeling of um, from A to B to C, specifically when we're touching somebody else in a sexual manner that we want to have a response or reaction out of them or when somebody has the same agenda or goal when they're touching you, that you feel that in your body, in your nervous system, when somebody's touching you, they want you to get you from A to B. And I know each and one of you just have a few moments, just like tap into your own memory bank. Does it resonate? Does it, does it kind, of, kind of lift your hand? Okay. And is that satisfying? Hands up. Or is it not satisfying, hands up? Yeah, so I see mainly hands up is not satisfying. Satisfying for me, and I imagine you have your own experience is when I can relax in my sexual expression. And when I feel comfortable, and when I don't have to pretend I just need to do. So, what I would like to draw, and I need to change the camera just a little bit, that this is fully on, and I hope you can see that, is I draw a hand first.
this one here is your arm and your hand. Everybody can see that? Yeah. And this, let's say this hand is a symbol for your body. And then up here is your brain. And what I would like to start and to go into is when we finding pleasure in our hand that we finding a sensual inflow, a sensory inflow. And we go there in a little bit in an exercise, but first I would like to show you. So what we do is we have here all this nerve ending in our skin, in our body, in our hand, where this is getting delivered into your pleasure center. And in your pleasure center, it fires up your reward center and tells, oh, it feels good. You know what I mean, right? So when you, when you touch somebody, your beloved one or your uh, uh, partner or wh whoever you just touch somebody, and you feel yourself this when you when you feel yourself the inflow the sensory inflow this is what we call direct pleasure you feel yourself so when you touch somebody else and you have an agenda or somebody else is touching you and they have an agenda and all of a sudden you touch them and you want to get them in an orgasm or somebody want to somebody who's touching you, they want to get you into an orgasm. That is landing as well in their pleasure center. So they do something so that they get a response. Yeah, does that resonate? I don't know, I have to go on this side so you can see me. Okay, great. So this is what we call the indirect rule. So when you or people or whoever are in this indirect route, so they're doing something to get you to a point of orgasm or they get you to a point of um, uh, getting aroused or getting, getting uh, into a moaning space or what, whatever they, they, they do, they have an agenda. So there is an agenda or a goal involved. This is nothing wrong or nothing bad about that. We all have that in our nervous system. I call that the neurological feedback loop. And that it is for co-regulating ourselves when we're engaging with another person, with our beloved or with anybody in the world we're engaging. So the, the indirect route is important to have because we need that to engage. We all have that. Nothing wrong about the indirect route. But what is difficult is when the direct route is not working because we are goal oriented then we are stuck in the indirect route. So this is what I would like to show you is how to make the direct route your number one, so your default, and make your indirect route your number two, your bonus or an extra. So we just switch that around. Okay. Good. Um, I'm going over there um, to my computer, starting some keynotes. Um, presentation and then we go in the first round of question and answer. So give me one second, please. Um, go here. Okay, now you have me on this side. Let's see if there's a microphone. And I start sharing the screen. 
Okay. Some of you have seen that already. So let's get into that. Everybody can see that thumbs up. Great. Okay. So what I would like to show from that point is that sexuality uh, and the goal is starting with a sexual arousal or being horny or turned on and everybody knows how they feel in their body. So um, I can't see the time now. Everybody can see the time in the right hand corner. Okay, so so that sexual arousal and time, they're going together. So we want to stay as long as possible in sexual arousal. But when we're having a goal, then um, uh, we use our sensuality as a foreplay. What is good? So I love foreplay. Everybody loves foreplay? Oh, I'm here. Okay, so what I would like to go into with you is that there is no foreplay, there's just play. And how to stay in play. So the next thing is everybody knows the point of no return. It is this part in your nervous system, in your body. If you reach that point, you just climax, you come. Uh, even if your grandma is coming in the room, if you're on the point of no return, you fall down that edge and show is over. So you know what the point of no return is, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I talk more later about that. <laughs> so that when we, what we call the foreplay, we do that with oxytocin. So is the, is the, the feeling good hormone, is the um, is a neurotransmitter where we're feeling connected, where we're feeling safe. And it's a, um, um, a neurotransmitter to co-regulate and self-regulate our nervous system. So oxytocin is good. It makes, makes us feel connected and we feel the sensual sensation in our skin. And when we're getting horny and aroused where sexual energy feels kind of just like, oh, it's a little bit itchy, I want to have a little bit more. So dopamine comes in. Dopamine is where we want to have more of. Yeah, so if you're having kind of an addictive um, uh, uh, area in your psyche, you know, dopamine keeps you going. Yeah, coffee, for example, cigarettes, nico nicotine, alcohol, um, shopping, cleaning, uh, any kind of where you want to have more of as a substitution. And the mother of all addictions, in my perception, is the climax, because we're getting more dopamine in our nervous system on the climax than with anything else. So climax is, an, is a massive dopamine producer in our body. So when we're reaching um, uh, the point of no return where we, where we climax, so when we have a goal or when we want to go towards that, we just need enough dopamine in our nervous system that will collapse our nervous system. So on this point on the edge, this is where we are orgasmic. But when we go in above that edge, this is where climax is happening. So the, the contractive peak orgasm, the contraction that's happened literally in the brain, and we know that as a spasmic reflex in our genitals. So I know that very well. Everybody knows what I mean? <laughs> okay, good. So what happens is, um, no, this is another slide here. So, so we have been all conditioned for that. Specifically, we men uh, through pornography. And because pornography is part of our sexual um, satisfaction, we bypass our physical body through visual stimulants and we go into a um, Im immediately dopamine release when we watch pornography. So what happens is that the average of climax through bypassing our body and being only visual and dopamine stimulated is an average of 7.5 minutes worldwide, including the foreplay. 7.5 minutes average sexual encounter. Um, it's not a lot. I imagine some of you are much better than that. Uh, I could just like get it going in my best time watching porn in 30 seconds. <laughs> 
to say. Okay, so what happens in the moment when you climax, you release serotonin and serotonin makes you feel euphoric. You just feel really good in your body. It makes you feel just um, hallelujah. It feels just awesome. But it comes like a spike, it comes in and then it goes down like a Christmas tree. So when that happens, you release another neurotransmitter and that is prolactin. Prolactin is, is getting produced specifically in women when they breastfeed to um, put the sexual energy on hold. So when we're having a climax, we release a little bit of, of prolactin every time. So this prolactin in our nervous system and our body tells our nervous system and our action when we're having sex, okay, job done, go back to sleep or go to work. And uh, we're switching into the left brain hemisphere into linear thinking and going active into action. So when that happens, prolactin sinks down in a really hangover mode. So after a climax, a little bit later, and it can take maybe a day or two days or sometimes a few hours, um, we're feeling kind of just like flat, disconnected. Because when prolactin is rising, not only serotonin is dropping, dopamine is dropping, and oxytocin is dropping. So um, that's another slide that's not so important. I guess everybody knows that. So let's go in here into the first round of questions. I stopped sharing here. Um, I have the chat on and let's have about five, maybe 10 minutes and please unmute yourself. And uh, I guess who speaks first comes first. Anybody who wants to say something, ask something. I'll go. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hi. Um, is it different for men and for women? That's a really good question. I don't know. I'm not a woman. <laughs> um, what I can say to that is that women, in my experience, they are less goal-driven mm. or a sense of connection um, what is one specific thing and i just want to share that later about the nervous system but i just do that a little bit now is that what is different in the neurological wiring with women is um that the uh, that, uh, mm -hmm. And then please unmute yourself if you want to say something. So that the vagus nerve connection um, is connected to the sexual organs, to the uterus, to the um, uh, cervix in specific, what gives women a complete different wiring in their nervous system than um, men on a climax. So we are just poor guys, I'm sorry. Uh, neurologically, we are not that evolved and advanced. We don't have the vagus nerve connected to our genitals. Um, we are sympathetic driven and we want to get that thing just done. Kind of generalized spoken. Okay, another question. Please. I can't really see who wants to say something. There are question. Do you think there's any really terrible repercussions for, with men watching porn? Like sexually for them? Um, I'm not totally against porn. I'm just saying that I always wonder if it causes any sexual dysfunction in men. Yes, it might. yes it does. It does. Yeah. Like what would you like how would you describe that? Yes. Um, there is a really great page out there. It's the husband from Mania Robinson. His name is Gary Wilson. Gary and Wilson. you can look that up. Of course, the brain on porn. 
And I'll just give you just like a short overview about what I know about that is specifically through the visual stimulants um, from the neck upwards, you completely bypass the um, oxytocin release in our, in our body. Mm -hmm. So all what men do is when they watch porn and or I include myself in there is I completely bypass the entire oxytocin related connection layer of mm -hmm. being intimate with a partner. And on a long term run, specifically under this, um, what I said before, the Delta Force B release under mm -hmm. a climax, we're creating a pathway specifically through visual stimulated pornography uh, watching that we only getting stimulated and sexually aroused when we have the visual input. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, my partner, Mark, when we first got together, he was watching it and we had some, not, he's 20 years older than me. Mm. So, and I'm 40, but he, uh, it, it caused some problems sexually in the beginning. Now we've gotten over it and we've worked through it, but I feel like maybe sometimes it has an effect on men. I don't know, maybe not. Yeah. Yes. To, to I'm not against it. I'm just saying, you know, it, since you stopped watching it, things have been a lot better. I'm, I'm, I'm not against porn either. The thing is, it's just getting really boring soon when you know one porn, you know every porn. Because yeah, I know. Porn ends in the same way. Yeah. And, um, and the, the, the intimate, emotional, and feeling related connection to an intimate partner is completely gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what? Okay, one, one other question before I move on with the next slide. I have a question. Please. Um, can you hear me? I hear you well, yes. Uh, hi, Matt. Um, I was wondering if you can speak more about um, arousal. And um, I, I understand that that can be different for different people, um, but maybe more about those factors that can lead somebody to experience really intense arousal and sometimes how that can be more challenging. Um, on a personal level, um, it's really strange. I've had experiences where um, a man has simply touched me in a very non-sexual way and I experienced this really strong arousal and I didn't really understand why. And I've been trying to find an answer to this question. Um, and I just wonder how you know, we're talking about hands on our pleasure and arousal and relaxation. And I was wondering if you can maybe share more about that. Yes. When you, when you talk about arousal, was it a desired arousal or was it an arousal that you not really wanted? It was unexpected arousal that yeah. I had not even thought about whether, whether I wanted. And I think there was probably some kind of a boundary, lack of communication, something that happened, but I experienced really strong arousal that is really unusual. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how that happens. How is it possible that, that, can, that somebody can experience that in their bodies um, without being a sexual context? Oh, that's a really good question. I... I think, and, and, and I might answer that later with, with the other slides, but what I think what is happening is that when you have a kind of an connective engagement with that person and that there is a desire within you or not a desire, I don't know, but you're feeling safe with that person, that if there is a kind of an, um, a resonance with you, a resonance that kind of on an emotional and on a physical level is resonating between two of you. Your mind can think one thing, but your body is responding in a complete different thing, in a complete different direction. And, um, and sometimes the mind creates its own meaning and story around arousal. And the body has its own function around that. And in the best way, they are, they are in alignment. And sometimes the mind want to get into that and the body is not following. And sometimes the body is doing its own thing and the mind kind of is confused because we're not getting an, an, a context about what's going on. That's so interesting. That makes a lot of sense. 
And when you talk about, uh, when we talk about how, uh, what we want to do is kind of like take away this goal-oriented mindset from our connections, um, I don't know if you're going to get into this later, but I'm wondering more about um, like how are, so, what are some tools or strategies for men that can be really challenging to do and, um, and, and like, you know, I, I know that there's like a whole, you know, side to like our minds and what excites us and all of that. And it's endless, I'm sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess maybe if we can talk more about that at some point, that would be great. Yes. So I put on some more uh, keynote slides and then we see if some of the questions getting answered. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Matt, uh, thank thank you. you for these questions. They were really great. And uh, please write your question down. Um, because I have just only five centimeters in the chat box, I can't really see it. Um, but we just go in, uh, in, in about 10, 15 minutes in the next question sh uh, section. So I start sharing my screen again. Uh, da, 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 da. Mm. So what I would like to guide you next into is pleasure for relaxed arousal. So what I have next on is this slide that you have seen with your hand or with your body. And here is your brain. Yeah, and this is the sensory inflow. You have more nerve ending in your hands than anywhere else except your mouth and your genitals. And that includes you have more nerve ending in your genitals than in your hands. Therefore, when your hand's getting it, your genitals will get it. Yeah, so that's why we start with the hands, because there's another layer of pleasure to it. So what I would like to guide you into is, it's a, it's a somatic, neurological dynamic that we need to bridge here, that you're going into an action, what is the motor of your, of your somatic nervous system, towards a felt sense of pleasure. And we need to do that between three and five minutes to get that activated, that you start not understanding from a rational point, but from, a, from an embodied place, what I mean to translate that into the genitals. So that when you start feeling action towards pleasure, you start getting a different sense what pleasure is and how it works. I could just explain a 50 minute long how the neurological pathway works, but I don't want to bore you. Important is you have to feel that in your body for a moment. And um, let's, let's do it. So let's go into a little pleasure exercise here. So the pleasure exercise is, I show you that, is you just sit on a chair, wherever you are, you lean back, and take something in your hands, whatever it is. I have a little stone here. Uh, can be a pan, can be a water bottle or a tripod, whatever you want to take in your hand, it doesn't matter. Important is that you feel it with your hands. And we do that for about five minutes. And this is the entire key dynamic of everything that we just want to go in the next slide into, and I guide you in. <sighs> so lean back as if you're having a margarita in your hand on the beach. Make connection with that, what you have there in your hands. The challenge here is, it is too simple for the mind to grasp, and that makes it too complex to understand. You might think that this is boring. You might judge that, or you might think this is not working for you. Just allow yourself to feel it with your hands so that you make connection and you might feel some information with your fingertips, with your hands. So what is it made of? Normally we give it a label and the purpose what it's for. 
and I invite you to go beyond that. And just find something that is pleasant. And if you can't really find it yet, I invite you to slow down your speed by half and slow it down again, maybe till you really stop moving at all. And then see if you can find something that feels really good already, maybe here between your fingers or here on your palms. You might want to use the object with one hand and stroke it over the other hand. Or you want to hold it in your hand and move the other hand over. So the slower you go, the more you will feel. <sighs> so there's nothing coming back, nothing to give, nowhere to go. It has no agenda. It's just this is nerve ending in your skin corresponding with the nerve ending in your brain. Can you feel it or can you not feel it? Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't go anywhere. It's not about love, it's not about relationship. It's just the pure data of sensual pleasure. And does it feel enjoyable or not? And how can you make it more enjoyable without going anywhere with it? Oh. Important here is that you doing an action by choice and that this action is towards the sensation of sensual pleasure in your skin, in your hands. You don't need permission for feeling that. It's your birthright. It was always there and it always will be there. And it might feel a little bit strange. Some of you might have some feelings coming up. Some of you might have some resistance. That's all okay. Nothing that needs to be fixed or repaired. It's just the experience. And slow your hands down to the stop. Let that reverberate in your nervous system, in your body. And just notice what you notice in your body right now after about five minutes feeding with your hands. So this experience, I'll show you that slide again. Okay. 
This is the direct route that I've shown you before that is not existing for most people. What I invite you to make your default, your number one inflow of feeling sensual inflow with your skin. So it starts with the hands and when the hands getting it, the rest of your body will get it. Okay, so. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's go in back into questions for a few moments. If there are some questions that you have regarding to that, because that's a really important piece. Where's the question? My, I have a question. Did you enjoy feeling pleasure with your hands? Lift your hands up. Yes. Um, was it difficult for some of you feeling something? Um, for some, yeah. Um, um, does it make sense? that the sensual inflow of your skin has nothing to do with your partner. Yeah, good. This is what I call in my system the base. I call that the base of self-care and self-love. So that has to be in place first before anything else will happening. So when we're talking about relaxed arousal, this is the pathway that needs to be activated and functional. And as I said that, it's your birthright. That means when you were born, it was there. So some of you has, have children, right? Yeah, I have children. And for, for, for who of you has children, you know that children taking everything on their hands and they're feeling it, they're making connection with the world, they're putting it in their mouth and, and that they're, they're touching everything and they're just feeding everything they can get in their hands. Yeah, have you seen that? It's natural. So um, who of you was a child? <laughs> of course, <laughs> that's just a joke. So, Long story short, this is the foundation. That's the, the base of inflow. And it's like you learn to play a music instrument. You cannot buy an instrument, you buy the notes and you don't have it in. You have to practice that. And that's, that takes some time. So I have, I have a challenge that calls a 64 day wakening up the hand challenge where I invite people on a daily basis, five minutes a day, take something in your hand and feed it up, get your nervous system back on track feel stuff with your hands get your back your hands back online so when you touch somebody that you not necessarily need their response so that you can touch and feel yourself all what you need is permission from your partner may i feel you and when that permission is given your nervous system and their nervous system will respond differently and when you can feel each other simultaneously, when you have that in place, you will have a different experience from a place of relaxed arousal. And that's what I want to guide you into next. Is there another question? There are probably a million questions, but we're running out of time. Let's move on. So the nervous system and safety. So safety needs to be in place first. If there's no safety between you and your sexual partner, good luck. There is no, there is no really a conscious place of transformative sexuality. It can be rough, it can be hard, it can be sensual, it can be anything. If you're not safe, good luck. So, 
I make it as short as possible, as precisely as I can. I'm a super fan of the Polyvega theory from Stephen Porges. So the, the Polyvega theory is a, is a revolutionary way of um, mapping out the nervous system and how we engage with other humans. So the social engagement is that part, how we as mammals relate. We're making eye contact, we're talking to each other, we see each other's faces, we hear the voice and we can literally through the, through the facial expression see if somebody is safe to us or not safe to us. Neurologically, we feel that. So the vagus nerve activity, so the ventral vagus nerve that has been developed from, from the day we got born, mainly through the release of oxytocin created of, uh, 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 related to safety, how we engage with the world. So and this is how we engage and behave with other people and with the world around us. So in our social engagement system, we detect in a split of a second if we're safe or if we're not safe, and that can change all the time. So what is safe for one person can be lethal for another and vice versa. So, so the uh, nervous system is hierarchical structured between the ventral vagus, what is your social engagement system, your sympathetic nervous system, what is uh, everything that is based on mobilization, and your parasympathetic nervous system what is the dorsal vagus. So the dorsal vagus is this part of the reptilian brain that keeps your heart beating and your breath going when you sleep. Yeah, so you, you, you cannot rationally control that. So with your social engagement system, you detect there's something for just called neuroception. And with neuroception, you detect if you are safe in your environment where you're in or if you're not safe. And there's either this or the other. And as I said, they can vary. There's a lot of gray in between, but this is to give you a, a, a picture about that. So let's go with the not safe, not safe side first. It's the survival mechanism. So when we are not safe and we cannot socially engage with another person, we cannot communicate, we cannot engage in any, in any way, we switch from the social engagement system into the sympathetic what most people know as the fight, flight, or hide response. So it's related to danger. And danger is real in our nervous system. I know when I'm in danger. When I'm in danger, I can't feel anything. I just want to get away. And I, I guess, so you can lift up your hands if this resonates. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, thank you. So if you can't go away out of danger, if you're trapped or if you if if if, if the, the, the the threat is overwhelming, you will go into a freeze or shock state. You where you're getting really numb, you faint, you collapse, you shut down. It's this part where we where the nervous system goes into um, into death faint, for example. Yeah, so it has a good reason because if you're getting eaten from the tiger, you don't feel pain. So it's a good part in the nervous system that we have there. And um, people die there. In sh in sh people die on shock. So if you can't feel anything and there's, there's no sexual stuff going on between you and your partner, you probably hang out on this side of the nervous system. Or somebody else can't feel it, they hang out there on the side of the nervous system. So when I talk, when I teach practitioner, this is what, I, what they need to understand. It's just like when you talk with people and you have them in your practice, where are they? And you have to know your neurological stages that you can determine and detect their neurological stages. And when you know what they are and how to detect them, then you know how to change them. And there are different ways of doing that. One of them is definitely feeling stuff because what happens is when you feel stuff, you release oxytocin in your central brain that is inhibiting the release of cortisol and adrenaline on your amygdala, your fight flight center, and is keeping your nervous system back in a state of regulation so you feel ease and calm. So when you sit back and you relax and, and feel it and your nervous system sinks back in, that's a state of self-regulation. You can do that with yourself when you touch an object and when you feel it. 
So in the online training, I go deeper into that, how that is functioning and how the noticing brain and, and, and how that is all working. Uh, unfortunately, I just need to speed up a little bit because time is running. So when we save, and that's where we want to go with our partner, we are empowered, we can make choices. When we save with somebody else, we can create intimacy and connection. As mammals, as pair bonders, this is the feature that we have to have in place to be sensual and to be sexual with each other. So when we are safe with each other, we can go on sympathetic, but it's in a safe place. It calls mobilization is everything that feels good and fun when you move your body, dancing, moving, running, doing workout, everything that the body loves to do in physical state when you save is mobilization and it's good for the body. And that's the place where sexuality is happening. It is a sympathetic response. It has to happen in a safe environment with a ton of oxytocin to go to this place where we want to go. And that's the bliss state that calls in the dorsal vagus, the parasympathetic, the immobilization, sleep, rest, rejuvenation, deep cuddle spaces. When you, when you fall with your partner into this place of oneness, when you had a really beautiful lovemaking, this is where transformation is happening. There is no goal there, there's nowhere to go, it's just oneness, the void, infinity. This is where spiritual stuff is happening, but not as a goal. It just happens as a bonus, as a byproduct, it's, it's an extra, it's just there. So I just speed that up here on that point. This is the most vulnerable plate in the nervous system, specifically for women, because the vagus nerve is connected in the nervous system to the uterus. And if there's a sense of unsafety in the nervous system with the man, your uterus will not go in connection. Your, 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 your cervix and your womb will not be part of that show if you're not safe with the man you're having sex with. So the women carrying this entire key of this transformative bliss state in their body, in the womb connection to the, to the, to the vagus nerve connection. Sorry guys, we don't have that. We are lucky kind of being invited to going there with women. So we can easily drop from that bliss state into shock, faint and collapse. You cannot go back the other side. Nervous system is not wired that way. You can go from this bliss state into fight flight. You cannot go back from fight flight into bliss state. You can go from shock pain in mobilization or from mobilization in shock pain. Um, for example, having an accident when you're doing sports or yoga or anything, or when you're doing some kind of therapies, you're bringing yourself back and expressing your emotions in the mobile state when you save. And between the fight flight and mobilization, there's another kind of link. Um, then there's a hybrid state, and that's between mobilization and social engagement system, and that's that part of the nervous system where you negotiate what's going to happen and where you create an agreement about your limits, your boundaries, and your desires. And that's important to have in place. And this is where the social, uh, the somatic cons consent engagement system, creating an agreement field with your partner comes into place. All right, um, I dropped that part because I want to guide you into the next step. Um, that's not important as well here. Let's go straight in. So this part of the um, being on the edge of relaxed arousal, this is that part where you want to be with your partner. So you want to create oxytocin in your body by feeling each other and having connection with each other based on the agreement that you have intentionally taking the goal out of the equation, just being with each other, feeling each other. Um, no time pressure, no agenda. 
And this is the root of direct pleasure and the sensory inflow that I've shown you with your hands. And when you then start to get really relaxed, this is what I call relaxed arousal, this is where dopamine comes in. But your layer of dopamine, your sexual arousal, you're getting, you're getting literally hard, you're getting wet. You, 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 you know, your nipples uh, are coming online. You just feel your goosebumps. It's just like, oh my God, you just want more. Just keep your level of oxytocin as the base. Don't, don't let dopamine run the show and don't run to the goal. So keep your dopamine low, but you need dopamine. Otherwise there is no arousal happening. So then when serotonin comes in and you start to get euphoric in your nervous system, and you start to feel kind of just like, whoa, that is just like, it's just so beautiful, so nice. And uh, you have endorphins coming in from your thymus gland. And it feels kind of just like it, it crosses your, your uh, um, um, blood brain um, a barrier and goes straight into your brain where you're just having um, just like this, this feelings of, of, of one as the bliss there that I've shown you. And this is where melatonin comes in. So where melatonin in a cocktail with the endorphins and oxytocin, dopamine and um, uh, serotonin, you know, all the neurotransmitter creating this cocktail. So this is where you can play with each other. So play as a neurological state that is not based on procreation, that's not based on the goal, that is based on just like being, being fun, having fun with each other. So there's a part that I call the three minute game, what I teach in that online course, where you can engage with your partner from the level of expressing your desires and your limits. So, so this is what part of the somatic consent engagement system is. So it doesn't matter how you play and what you do. It doesn't matter what rocks your boat. It can be BDSM, it can be just like raw, pure pleasure. Uh, you can use it for rejuvenation, it can be king, just for fun, you can call it Tantra. It doesn't really matter what it is. When you play between 15 and 30 minutes in this realm, what happens is you release automatically the endometrial tryptamine in your cerebrospinal fluid from your pineal gland. If you've taken ayahuasca or um, any other uh, psychedelics, this is what happens. You have that in a natural organic dose in your body. So that sexual connection and sex can become a spiritual experience when you hang out in that place where consciousness rises in another level of engagement into this bliss state, into this unified field of consciousness. And this is where transformation is happening. And this is what I call the bliss state. All right. So conscious sexuality needs a solid house. And this is when you just imagine a pyramid, a pyramid that has a basement where the shadows are, so survival strategies and behavior of need to belong, then you need to have your a solid base. So the solid base is your self-care, is self-love, is the sensual inflow, that piece that I've shown to you with the hands, feeling your sensual arousal, being connected to your body. When you know how that feels, you can ask your partner for permission. Hey, can I touch you? Can I feel you? And when your touch not, partner touches you, that you can give permission. Yeah, you can touch me. Or you say, not now. I'm not feeling that today. So that you can express your limits. So you need to have this level of giving and having permission with each other. If you want your partner to do something for you, you have to ask, hey, can you touch me? Or if your partner wants you to do something for them in a certain way, they have to ask. And that takes the entire pleasing each other and trying to be nice and getting a response out of the other person completely out of the equation. And then the top of this entire thing, if you have that embodied, this is where love and care and intimacy and relationship based on the agreement that you're having with your partner is falling into place. 
And this is where lovemaking and conscious sexuality simultaneously is happening. It is what both people want, where both people are in action, and it is for both simultaneously. Okay, so this is a little picture of the somatic consent engagement system that I teach as a map of how to engage with other people. And let's have five minutes of questions. Matt? Yes. Thank you for this, um, this introduction here. This was incredible. I've seen that before, but you said something about when you're in the mobilization phase yes. and when there's danger, your uterus is not on board. I didn't really understand. It was pretty fast for me. Yeah. Uh, you were saying something about the uterus and how that is connected in that context. Yeah. What, what I does said it mean? is on the safe side of the nervous system. Yeah. When you're on the not safe side, you know, there is no, um, let's say in the, in the terms of sexual abuse, violence and rape, hmm. that you can't feel anything either there. Yeah, so, but when you're on the safe side and when you engage with a partner and you're not feeling 100% fully safe with that partner because there's a, there's a lack of boundaries, hmm. there's kind of an agenda that you feel, you can't say no, you think you have to um, give yourself in without actually uh, wanting it and you're not feeling fully safe. When you're unsympathetic and not really fully safe, it might even be closer to, this, to the fight flight response where if you can't feel anything and then to the safe side of the nervous system. So when you feel really safe and when you feel really connected, you will feel a connection in your uterus. Hmm. Your cervix will be part of a sexual experience on another level as the foundation of the bliss state. All right, thank you. Yeah, okay. Any okay, other? then my question is, how do you drag yourself to that safe side? Safe side? Well, the thing is you cannot drag yourself. You cannot push somebody into, uh, into happiness. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, but I, I talk about one, one thing is either the push or the pull. You know, whenever you feel like you have to push yourself, you need to do that because this is what the status quo looks like, or this is how all the good causes look, or you have group pressure, in a workshop where everybody's doing it now you have to do it where you push yourself i should because i know i've paid for it and i have to have this experience whenever you have a sense of pressure you cannot go there but when you pull yourself when you feel oh my god just like there's something that sounds exciting it feels a little bit scary but I want to try it anyway when I can express my limits and my boundaries and can say no when it doesn't resonate anymore. So instead of, instead of dragging yourself in there, follow the pull instead of pushing yourself. Okay. This is helpful. Um, thank you so much, Matt. Um, I wanted to kind of have a follow-up question to that. So if you find yourself in a situation where um, your body feels unsafe and isn't, and you are in this pushing sort of mindset. Is your general advice then to just kind of listen to the wisdom of the body in that sense, or is there a different sort of interplay when you have a disconnect between your body and where your mind's at? Yeah, great question. Thank you. I would say uh, stop. Stop and have a conversation about what is what is the level of of engagement that has not happened yet what's the what's the level of communication that needs to happen that you can really sink into that place of ease and relaxation and a good indicator is if you can't feel pleasure in your hands you're probably not safe and it, it needs more it, it needs more communication then yeah okay thank you Thank you, very helpful. Another Can I ask moment? a question? Yes, please. Um, 
when you talk about um, the dopamine when it comes in and that's what uh, starts to build that uh, sexual arousal, mm -hmm. um, can you talk about, um, I, I just wonder if you talk about dopamine and if that's connected with like connecting with erogenous zones or like what, what makes the dopamine kick in and um, also the different types of touch. There is touch that can be really relaxing, but that doesn't really lead to arousal. And what is the difference? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I can answer that in that short time fully. But what I would say when it comes to your um, uh, erogen zones that um, you know how they work best and you know how you want to be touched there. And um, when somebody is touching you there, not the way how you want, the way how they want, because they want to have the, the response out of you, because they want to see you getting turned on or, or getting orgasmic or feeling something, then you probably do the opposite of getting there. It might be more difficult to go there. So, so, so dopamine is that when, you know, I noticed that when I'm on this edge, when I have too much dopamine, when I'm, when I'm too high on dopamine, my nervous system feels like I'm, I'm getting close to collapse and falling down the edge. So um, um, my, my, my nervous system goes into this spasmic things. That's not relaxed arousal. Relaxed arousal is when you can, when you can breathe and when you can expand. And when you when you can feel and you you can literally communicate. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, I had this experience that um, it was like I felt like I was dizzy from arousal, and I wonder if you would say that that's probably connected to dopamine because it was like so overpowering that you felt like you needed to like do something. So that's yes. why you would call probably dopamine kicking in, right? Yes. Okay, we have time for one more question. Who is that? Can I ask something? Yes, please. You're the last one. <laughs> so, um, uh, I would just want to uh, react on the question about um, when you're doing lovemaking, uh, have the feeling that you are overwhelmed by uh, a traumatic experience you had before, um, when you suddenly get this feeling and actually you, want, you feel that you want to stop, but you always have this partner with you. Mm -hmm. um, how important is it that you, that you are both uh, know about this, what you're teaching? Because if one of the two of you uh, are going into this state of, of freeze or, or, and the other one doesn't know what is happening, um how important is this i mean this is <laughs> yeah this is something great. everybody should know isn't it <laughs> great question um mm. i i think as um self-sovereign beings we need all the capacity of being capable of going to a degree there on our own without being dependent on, on another person and um and unfortunately you can't go there on your own. I, 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 have, I had some experience, um, um, but I have, I have noticed being with a partner who is not capable of going there, the relational status is not sustainable. Mm. That's my experience. And you might have different and other people have other, different, uh, other experience. I'm, I'm not interested anymore to compromise my nervous system responds to somebody else's um, uh, agenda. Okay. I'm not interested. I, I stopped relating that way. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. it's just this awareness that uh, I feel so many people don't have. And so yeah. it's getting these problems. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Time flies. It's 7.25. Um, uh, share the screen again and um, 
and I show you what I would like to offer to you. And if I um, put that into the chat box, um, to everyone in the meeting. Forgive me, I'm a little bit slow here. So I hope everybody can see that. So there are some offerings um, um, that I have um, from uh, one to one session, online sessions. You can um, book a 50 minute free discovery call. There's as well the um, um, link to the ticket uh, from the uh, online course that I'm offering. Oh, sorry, it's so here from the online course that I'm offering. And um, there's a bonus in there. So I offer the Somatic Consent Student Handbook, Pleasure in Your Hand and Three Minute Game online course is part of uh, the offering. And uh, by signing up today, it's 197 euro. Just have a look and see if that resonates with you. I um, would love to have you all there. And um, would like to go so where um, uh, what you will learn in this online course is uh, somatic awareness and sensitivity somatic embodiment of the engagement system so i showed that to you in the in one of the slides so to know when to put yourself first and when to put yourself second so that you that you're really getting clear and solid about your boundaries and your limits and really ask for what you want so that your erotic potential can expand in this dynamic where you want it to be and where you want to go with your partner so that you can be empowered to have this conversation with your partner to go there where you want to go and that's not a coincidence. This is not um, um, a good luck. It's, it's a specific system, it's a specific structure that you can learn in your nervous system where the sensory inflow is the felt sense, the foundation of this bliss state. Um, I said that here. So um, we start on the 13th of June. Um, it's every Saturday, Central Europe time, set at 10 a.m. It goes to the 15th of August. Um, each and one of you who is joining is getting one 30-minute um, uh, individual free session included. So you will get all the videos and maps that we're doing uh, so that you can do self-studies. And we will do this entire thing on a private Facebook group with question and answers and um, where we share in this 90 minute online call more about what's going um, on in between. So it's 7.30, 90 minutes is nearly up or it is up. Um, if you need to go, please go. If you have any questions right now, uh, can be anything about this offering. It can be anything how you feel at the moment. What's your main takeaway and um, who would like to share or ask, or uh, maybe we have time for two or three people here. Thank you yeah, so much, is, Matt. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. No, that's okay, I just wanted to thank you. And uh, I learned so much and you answered so many questions and I can't wait to learn more from you. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you too. Say that again. Oh, I just said thank you, Matt. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Be good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe one day you could consider doing this seminar that we're offering, but with another timing, just because I live in the US and it would be like, 4 a.m. in the morning, yeah. but I'm, I'm really interested, so. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. about that, yes, I, 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 will, I will consider that. Mm. So, um, 
Let's let's finish something else before we go. I invite you to just take another object in your hand. Lean back. And let's do that for about two minutes. If you need to leave, please leave. Tap straight in the sensation, the vibration, the feelings. Keep your eyes open or closed as you like. And while you're feeling that with your hands, the sense of pleasure, whatever you feel, I invite you to revisit the last 90 minutes and what you have learned. What has been resonating with you? What hasn't? What do you like to want more of? Just stay in connection there with your mind where all this can lead in your mind at the same time. I notice on the nervous system is really sinking back into a sense of peace. <laughs> that feels really good. Mm. Ah. Mm. Slow down, so your hands stop. Let that reverberate a little moment. And I would like to acknowledge and appreciate each and one of you. Every one of you who made a donation. Every little bit counts. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your curiosity and interest. Um, if you have some words to say of gratitude, something that resonates, please feel free to write everything in the chat. Can hang out here a little bit longer. And um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will send an email around over Ticket Taylor for everybody who has signed up with the same um, notes that I put in the chat where you can choose. Um, there's a recording of that video. Um, I sent it around too. And uh, I would really love to welcome some of you on this online training and uh, have a beautiful day. And thank you very much for being here today with me. <laughs> wow, let us see my beloved partner, Sana, up there in the right hand corner. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here with me. I'd rather have you in my bed right now and playing with you. But <laughs> we have the duty of education. So my partner and I, Sana, we share more about that um, in upcoming events. We just um, will offer some couple work in the future and that you don't hear it only from a male perspective. She is an expert of uh, sexual embodiment as a woman, body worker, 
transformation, uh, 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 transformative um, uh, coach and facilitator, amazing woman. Yes. Look her up if you have this. <laughs> And apologies again for the beginning <laughs> technical chaos. That was just like a little shock in my system. <laughs> Took me a while to just like reboot myself and catch my thoughts. Hmm. Yes, uh, you can get the recording again. As I said, I will send around an email um, with all links and an uh, uploaded link of the recording. So um, donation, um, if somebody is still wanna donate, just go back to this Facebook, uh, no, not to the Facebook, to the Ticket Tailor link where you have signed up. I think it's still online and you can still make a donation on the same Ticket Tailor um, link. Uh, I think I sent the link around. So if you if you choose you want to still donate something, um, you have the chance to do it there. And uh, everything that resonates with you from a euro to the millions or so whatever you are capable of giving, everything is welcome. So there are still 20 people in here and I see a few faces and I imagine some of you. So I say last words of thank you. I appreciate